What's going on to all my Atlanta fans out there and welcome back to my channel. We are back with Atlanta season four, which unfortunately is the last season, but we got a long way before we get to that 10th episode. And tonight we are breaking down episodes one and two, which premiere tonight. And we got so much to break down here in this spoiler review. But before we get into it, if you haven't already, consider subscribing to the channel and hitting that notification bell. That way you don't miss out any of my daily content. You can also give your boy a follow on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter, all those links. Links can be found in the description of this video. Also, give this video a thumbs up and share the review. It means a lot to me and I appreciate the support. But more importantly, share your thoughts on episode one, episode two, favorite moments, least favorite moments, your thoughts, your theories, your deeper meanings, your interpretations of certain things that took place in these first two episodes in the comment section. So for you all that do not know, we broke down the entire season three, episode by episode, scene by scene. We did recaps, we did you know live discussions, and I plan plan on doing the same plus more this time around because again it is the fourth and final season so keep an eye out for potential live streams kind of deeper meaning explaining videos little shorts on certain easter eggs so i plan on covering the hell out of the show and i'm excited to go on this journey with you all so with that being said y'all ready for tonight's breakdown let's get into episode one which was titled the most atlanta spoilers ahead as we open this new season with what I assume to be this version of a department store of Target, and the reason I say it looks like a Target because it literally did look like a Target, plus the reenactment scene that we're going to talk about here in a second. But my favorite character, Darius, he don't care what's going on. I mean, they're ramsacking the Target. They're riding the place, taking stuff, and he's just more concerned about returning this air fryer. When he said to the Target employee that he's returning it because he remembered he had an oven, I was dying laughing because I know one or two people that have an air fryer and I know people want to eat healthier. Let me know in the comments if you are yourself a owner of an air fryer and does the food taste a little bit better? Let's talk about it in the comments. But as he's trying to get his money back, when the employee took the money, I'm like, oh, this is like Robin season all over again as Darius is leaving the store. And this is when I was referring to a couple minutes ago when I said that they were reenacting a viral video. Y'all might remember, as you can see on the screen now, they were reenacting what headlines read to be George Floyd protesters attack a woman in a wheelchair who allegedly had a knife. Now, again, the first few videos, everyone's like, oh, these people are savages. They're riding targets. They're beating up old women in wheelchairs. But later on, more videos came out showing that same woman stealing stuff herself, but also stabbing mofos. So hence why people were beating her ass because she was stabbing people. So again, the hypocrisy going on with Karens in the world and we'll talk about here her here in a second but as I kind of went reenacting this moment I'm like wait a minute this and we all know for those that watch my reviews of season three we kind of talked about it where they were writing these seasons season three and four like in 2018 19 and 2020 and obviously the show was delayed because of the pandemic so this particular and you all notice season three and also in this season they're giving us these viral videos these memes that were funny a couple years ago so i'm thinking wait we're probably four to five to six months removed from season three and i think we're in 2020 let my investigators at home who know and do all these Easter eggs like I do. Is that the timeline about 2020, about six months removed from season three? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. But you know now, when Darius leaves the store and we get that classic overhead shot of Atlanta and we got Chief Keef's song playing, did you get nostalgia? Because it, it brought me back again. I know that people weren't the biggest fans of season three. I did my review. I talked about it. I really enjoyed season three. Uh, I just love the creativity and them taking Atlanta out, out of the States into Europe. I, I really enjoyed it. But I know people were like, oh man, this don't feel like Atlanta. It's a different vibe. It's a different tone. So I get all that. But let me know when you watch this first episode, did you feel like you were back? Did you feel like this is the classic Atlanta that you all came to love? Let's talk about that in the comments. But as we transition into catching up with Al, as he's stuck in traffic and just a quick side, I know I lived in Atlanta for about six to seven months and let me tell you I lived in New York I'm from Chicago places I've never been to LA I know they have terrible traffic but Chicago has pretty bad traffic but in New York does as well nothing I have never seen traffic like Atlanta I mean they have like 18 lanes that's how crazy it is but anyway side note we catch up to Al as we see him having this kind of sad puppy face on because he just found out that one of his favorite rappers recently passed away by the name of Blue Blood and we see that the news said that he passed away about three months ago 
pay attention to that statement because we have been always talking about this this sense of void that Al has and him just having like this midlife crisis on his hip hop career where he wants to take it does he want to still be an artist and I think this episode in particular kind of shines a light on that as far as foreshadowing I think he's peaked I think he's peaked at his career and this might be something that we talked about it. him leaving hip hop or maybe something more dark or maybe his own death coming about in the season might be wrong on that, but let me know your thoughts on all that stuff going on there. But as we learn Al talking to Darius in his scene, he's on his way to an airport. And again, I mentioned it, him going on, and he doesn't, this is a spare the moment type of vacation. He just wants to go. I think he said Jamaica or go. He doesn't like LA, doesn't like New York. So he just wants to go. And again, this just speaks to me saying this continuing, continuing story, this continuation of this arc of this character, just searching for something. There's just something missing in his life right now. He season one and two, he's trying to get famous. Season three, he becomes famous, but it isn't everything he wanted it to be. And now he's searching and yearning and looking for something to fill that void. We all know he lost his mother and how important that is to him. So I'm thinking that's a storyline that's going to finally be like fully developed and, and fully kind of understood in this new season let me know your thoughts on that but as Darius is in the car he sees that Karen is chasing him and we're going to go on this journey with Darius with this Karen who's never going to give up but at the same time we're going to see Al Paperboy go on his own self-discovery journey in this episode but let's check in what's going on with Ern and Van who are spending time together and it's good to see Van in this better headspace because last time we saw her Things got a little out of hand, if you know what I mean. You get it? Because the hands of the ninth, 10th episode, you know, all that stuff. But that's my poor attempt at a joke there. As I digress, as we get back into it, we hear that Ern mentioned it's been a minute since he's been here as they are at one of the more, and again, I've lived in Atlanta for, like I said, less than a year, but I, I went to Atlantic Station and it is a, it's popping. It's, uh, it's a mall that has literally everything but did you all notice the song that was playing in the background, Deborah Cox, Nobody's Supposed to Be Here? That's a nice little Easter egg to what's going on with their storyline. As we get back into the discussion here, as we see them run into one of Ern's exes, I believe her name was Kenya, and she can't seem to get out. She seems to be lost. Keep that in mind. We see Van runs into one of her ex-boyfriends who used to work at the AT&T like back in 2014, 2015, so like six, seven years ago. And again, remember that particular thread in regards to the past and them running into their past. And again, it is kind of funny when you go especially when you live in your hometown you go to a mall go to like a popular place you do kind of run into your past I think that that is something they're they're talking about but again I think there's a deeper meaning to them running into their past and particularly when we see these characters and, and we can all relate to this again especially if you live in your hometown where you grew up in you have moved on. You have explored other journeys. You went off to school. You went off to travel overseas. In this case, these characters have done that. But then when you come back, you find people that you grew up with or dated in the past, they're still stuck in that same position, right? They're kind of still in that same spot. And I think that kind of speaks to the progression and the growth of these characters. Again, they have traveled overseas. Al is a big hip hop artist. You know, we got Earn making money. Van's doing her thing. Darius doing their. So they've matured, right? But they have found themselves back in Atlanta. Atlanta, and they're still old school ways about people. People are still stuck doing the jobs they were doing when they were in high school. But also, there's another layer to what I think is going on here. And again, I could be 100% wrong. That's the beauty of the show. It's all about interpretation. Have you ever heard of the phrase, rite of passage? Now, I think that's exactly what's going on here. Now, if you guys don't know, I'm going to put it on the screen here as far as the definition, but it kind of speaks to what's going on with these characters, not just Van and Earn, but the journey that we're going to discuss of what's going on with Darius, as well as definitely what's going on with Al. So I think that that's kind of the big takeaway from this first episode, is this rite of passage with these particular characters, kind of a, a new path, a, a reborn of a sorts. Uh, that's what I think is really kind of going on and kind of the the theme that they're hinting at could be 100% wrong let me know how you all took all that in but speaking of Al as we talked about him his fame and still maybe not be entirely comfortable with being a well-known artist at least for the people of Atlanta we see this random stranger on his phone on I think like Instagram live or something but he mentions a to BT experience you know I'm here with my boy Al and I was like I don't know you as he drives off but it's funny again this goes back to the timeline when the show was written 
If y'all don't remember the BET experience, I'm going to put on the screen now was something that ran, as you can see, was the last time they were active was in 2019, which goes back to me saying that this show is probably taking place back in 2019, 2020, as far as like where they're living at in the current time. So again, I thought that was really funny, the whole BET experience thing. But back into Al, as he's noticing that the Blue Blood album is kind of in real time, is stuff is happening as he's doing things, right? We hear him at the gas station pumping gas as the... Blue Blood is talking about, you know, looking at this restaurant and getting a zoo pie, which leads out to walking into the restaurant. He orders a zoo pie, and this is where he's on this journey, this Blue Blood scavenger hunt, which I thought was kind of funny. And also, I would love to find an artist, very kind of like subliminal messages, this cryptic messages. I think of Tupac. I think of even, I used to listen to a lot of Lupe Fiasco, and there's a lot of other artists, Common, and a lot of artists that have like subliminal messages and kind of like little Easter eggs you can find within her album. But as we go on this journey, again, he's realizing what's going on and he's going on this journey. Meanwhile, my boy Darius is on his own journey as he and this Karen is relentlessly following him. And the thing about Karens, y'all, is no matter if they're most of the time wrong, <laughs> but if they're right or wrong, no matter what the end result is, they will not stop until they get their own answers. Even if the answer is not what they want, they still in their mind believe that they are right and you are in the wrong. My man Darius is climbing on higher ground because she's in a wheelchair and she just sits there and look at him and say, you know what? Fine, I'll wait. And that is just the epitome of a Karen, right? Just again, determined to do and get whatever they want, even if they, which again, then most of the times they're out of out of place, not minding her business, in complete wrong, she is concerned about that air fryer and, 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 and getting her justice as she probably assumes it to be. But going back into this scavenger hunt going on, my boy, Paper Boy, which takes him to a pool locker room for blue chips. We see him going to the arcade. We see him going to a connect to the comic book store in a laundromat, a movie theater, and he finally makes it to an abandoned plaza where he crumbs across Blue Blood's funeral with his wife sitting there let him know this is the end of the line. And again, when they're sitting there having the conversation and she talks about that she wished that Gary, which was Blue Blood's name, she wished that he had more fun in life. And I believe Al was only the fifth person to kind of crack this code to go on this message. It reminded me, and she's talking about no one really listens to the music. I'm a big Jay-Z fan. It reminded me of Renegade. If you all remember the line, Renegade featuring, you know, Jay-Z featuring Eminem. Do you fools even listen to music or do you just skim through it? How you rate music that thugs, nothing can relate to it. That reminded me a lot of that moment there. As again, Gary, she just wished she had more life. And I think had more fun in life, I think that hit out on another level. And I think, again, this this season, this fourth and final season, we're going to see, will he continue to be a hip-hop artist or will it lead him down a path that he's going to end up like Gary? I don't know. Let me know your thoughts on that as we end the episode with Earn and Van going through this random door, which leads them into the funeral with Blue Blood. They're walking out. The whole crew's back together. They're leaving in Al's car. And we see that Kenya's like, oh, man, I forgot to give my dad a gift. We see my boy Darius like, well, here, you can give him this air fryer. They drive off and we hear the rolling of the wheelchair, which brings us and assuming that that's Karen. She's going to get relentless. She's going to get whoever has the air fryer is her next victim. So really fantastic way to open up the season. Again, had the old school nostalgia vibes of Atlanta, but also the deeper meaning of rite of passage. Again, I think this is this is the season saying that these characters, now they're back home with new lenses, new perspective. They mature more, but where they're at, things just kind of stay the same. So what does that mean for moving forward? Do you stay stuck in that narrative and stay stuck in your position or do you move as we'll talk about with episode two? So the rebirth angle, what's going on with Al angle, Darius is always up to some craziness. I'm very intrigued to learn more about Van on this new season, but overall a really good way to open up the season. It's not as I want to say explosive or crazy or, you know, rooted in reality as season three premiere. And that we know that episode was crazy, but it's still a really good premiere. Let me know your thoughts on that. Let's get on to the second episode, which was titled The Homiest Little Horse. One of the biggest complaints that I know people had with season three was we're wrapping up the show and there were four to five episodes that did not literally have any of our main cast. I thought those episodes were very unique, very funny. Some of them were better than the others, but I know that that didn't work for some people. 
I wonder if episode two is kind of what they're going to maybe do similar to season three, where we're going to get our characters in the main narrative, but at the same time, it's going to be a separate story, which ends up coming full circle. Let me know if you all would want to see that again, like an A plot with a van, a Darius, an urn, an Al, and then a B plot that has really nothing to do with what's going on, but it ends up being kind of tied into our characters. Let me know if you all want to see that because we definitely get that pettiness to the maximum level that we get in this episode. But hey, before we get into this second episode breakdown, as you all heard at the beginning of this video, this video is sponsored. We got some new things since the last time we were reviewing this show, a much bigger community. You know, we got more movie reviews, TV reviews, but we also have a new sponsor of our channel. Let's hear from our sponsor of this video, Into the AM. Today's video is sponsored by Into the AM. Into the AM is a clothing company with a variety of amazing products such as t-shirts, hoodies, jackets, shorts and underwear, headwear, and much more. Their t-shirts have unique designs, they're incredibly soft and extremely comfortable, and they're made to last. But the best part is, you can get 10% off by using my discount code MOVIEFILES when you're selecting your new gear, which you can find that code in the description below. Well, shout out to Into the AM. I have quite a few of their shirts and I'm a very big fan of their apparel. So t-shirts, hats, hoodies, you name it, super dope stuff. You all, if you want to look fly this fall season, you can use my discount code. They always have like different discounts going on, so you can use my code and whatever sale they have going on and get yourself some into the am so shout out to them let's get into this second episode as we open up with meeting our side character by the name of lisa who's walking her dog her service dog as we know later in the episode as she's seeing her neighbor the emt as he's walking by and you know she's spying on him eating an egg and looking at him i think that speaks to a deeper meaning in lisa she listens to the way listens to see okay she's she's attracted to black guys obviously or at least this black guy and, and later on we'll talk about the hairdo the music again this seems to be this undertone of like she appreciates or she at least takes in some of the culture of black people but she obviously has her own ways and her white privilege and even some discrimination going on as we learn about a little bit about the episode but lisa she don't know what's coming her way. As again, we're, we're meeting her. She gets an email that comes in from this publisher who's like, hey, I read your, your manifest and you might be the next big thing. Let's set up a meeting. I can't wait to talk about that meeting because I said it last season. I hope we get the return of one of my favorite characters and we'll talk about him a little bit later. But meanwhile, we see Al calling Earn, talking about his login password it was AOL. He couldn't remember the password. It was his favorite movie. Oh, it was a Scarface. Oh, you was in middle school when you created it, so it was probably Mulan. I don't like Mulan. Oh, it is Mulan. I thought that was hilarious. As we find out that Earn's going to therapy and, you know, he's making fun of him, talking about you're, you, you're so rich, you're going to therapy. What do you say? You're rich therapy or therapy rich very funny stuff there but in all seriousness this episode and particularly donald glover's performance and the scenes between him and his therapist were like some real stuff man i was like i was very engaged especially in the way they would he was telling his story we finally learned what happened to princeton and then we find about the story about the airport situation the acting and the storytelling elements and again how they went from a plot and how to connect to b plot this episode was fire, yo. Again, I think I preferred episode one over two, but as I digress, let's talk about these therapy sessions. As we see him talking about recently ended probation, and when he said, wait, probation? I'm like, what the hell did he do? I went back and let me know if I'm wrong, but in my mind, I'm like, oh, this ties back to season one, episode one and two, when, if you all remember, that's when homeboy kicked Al's car and, you know, someone got shot and we end up going, they end up going to jail and whatnot, so I wonder if that's what they were referring to, like, if he's been on, I, I don't know if he's been on probation that long, because uh, his name was in the system and all that stuff, but let me know if that's what you all connected to probation to, or I don't think there's nothing in season three that would have got him in probation, but let me know how you all took that probation line. But more importantly, he says that his school is calling him to try to get him to speak to a school, which we'll talk about that a little bit later. But we got some some health issues going on with our boy Earn here, who is distracted by his phone and his, you know, his therapist trying to get his attention. He mentions to his therapist that he's having head problems, he's having heart problems, and it kind of all ties into stress and anxiety and things of that nature. As he's talking about, you know, the therapist is like, well, you know, what does your doctor say? He's like, uh, they don't think it's a big deal. They say I'm healthier as, a, as an ox, but, you know, I don't feel that way, right? He says, oh, why do you say that? We said, well, they told that to Kim Porter, and if you all do not know, 
know Kim Porter was an actress, a mother, and a lot of you all probably know her because she passed away, what, 2018, I want to say, uh, on again, off again relationship with, uh, you know, P. Diddy, Sean Cones, you know, whatever you want to call them. And I don't remember... As I don't remember being a controversy. I know that when she passed away, it was shocking. Like no one knew she was sick and she just kind of just happened. And I believe she passed away with pneumonia. So for those that maybe were like really big fans of Kim Porter or know more about the story, let me know if there were, if there was a controversy of how she passed away, if doctors overlooked the, you know, pneumonia she had, let me know in the comments below. But getting back into the discussion again, depression, panic attacks, all that stuff is going on. And he doesn't know where it stems from because... Life is good, you know, this job opportunity and he has another job coming up, which he mentions he's going to be maybe moving to LA, which I could totally see that being like the last episode, whatever shakes down this season, everyone's going to say their goodbyes as he's going to LA, will Van be there, uh, you know, will they separate, will they be there together, that's something we can look forward to. As we transition into day two of his therapy session, we finally get that bit of information. Again, if you have been a fan of this show like I have since season one, we never knew. He he mentioned it was more in season one than any other season when he talked about that he went to Princeton and he didn't finish school. We was like, oh, what happened? What did he do? Did something happen? Well, we find out, to make a long story short, there was this individual, I think her name was Sasha she was white and she was close friends with Earn. And we get the story of he had this job that came up. He bought this new suit. He was excited about it. One of his other friends invited him to a party. His friend Sasha said, Oh, go ahead to the party. I'll watch your suit. I'll put it in my dorm room. Lo and behold, he gets back. He can't reach her. She's playing this game. He can't, you know, he's calling her back and forth. He's like, Man, just effing. I got the master key. I'm going to go in there and get my suit. Unfortunately, Sasha put a spin on this story and allegations began and charges were coming about. So he ultimately had to leave school again. The rootedness there and the kind of the lesson that he learned there is, again, how kind of shaped earn right and kind of created this sense of spite and kind of created the sense of pettiness that kind of ultimately propels him to be in the person that he is today and i mentioned how donald glover probably a made-up story obviously for the purposes of the show but i think it's it's rooted in reality i think the way he was talking about that story and again he's starting to get emotional i don't remember the last time seeing earn get that emotional it's been a couple seasons but especially when he was living in that uh storage area and whatnot life was you know tough for him during that time but I really was like, damn, this is hitting me. This is why Donald Glover is such a great actor, in my opinion. But let me know if you all think that there's some deep rootedness, some personal connection that he had. And if you listen to his music, you know that he didn't have the hardest life. But he, you know, being have, you know, uh, biracial parents, he's, he's dealt with his uh, fair share of racism and discrimination. So I thought that that was a, a very interesting story. And we finally get to learn what happened to him in prison. I thought that was really, really interesting stuff there. But talk about Spite for a second before we get back to day three. I'll be honest with you all. Yes, I can admit that I have done things in spite. I have done things to put it like in people's face. And sometimes spite motivates me and fuels me as we see that happens to earn. So I can admit to that. I know it's not a good way. And as I've gotten older, mature, I've learned, realized that, you know, you shouldn't do things like that. You should do things for yourself, uh, for the betterment of yourself, betterment of your family and whatnot, and not be rooted in some, you know, pet, petty spitefulness and whatnot. But let me know in the comments. Again, we always like to have honest conversations with one another. If you all have a story or if you all have done things in spite let's go ahead and talk about it in the comments below but let's pivot over to day three and you know we got the whole pillow his that by the way that therapist i don't i've never been to therapy and i have nothing against therapy i just i don't personally I, I don't have the funds to if i could I, I probably would go to therapy but man i would probably go if i can get a cool ass therapist like i don't even know if they mentioned his name or not but he seemed to be just a, a, a kind-hearted you know individual and i know some people the people that don't believe in therapy, as we saw, you know, earlier, Al poking fun of it. But I know sometimes some therapists probably aren't as invested or care about their patients. But again, I digress. I just thought that their therapist was pretty dope individual and seemed like a, a really kind hearted person. But and I hope we get that therapist back some way, somehow, especially the way this episode ends. But anyway, we have another story to tell. We find out that Earn doesn't go to a school because he was going to go. He was going to go to speak at this event. But lo and behold, he goes on to an airport with Lottie and Van, and this was going to be the opportunity that he wanted to obviously kind of get closer to his family because they've been have their ups and downs this season one and whatnot. But he was going to also take this opportunity to tell Van that he was going to be moving to L.A., Lo and behold, he's going to check in. And y'all saw the episode with the whole, 
you know, a passport and discrimination being had and all that different stuff, living in spite. And he talks about, you know, I think I've learned my lessons, Mr. Therapist, and I think I want to take a break. And I, and I thought the therapist was going to maybe, you know, say something or maybe try to have him come back. But he's like, no, nah, man, you know what? I think you have grown and you have learned and I'm always here for you, brother. So again, shout out to that therapist. I hope we get him back later in the, se- in the season. Uh, and I think we will because I think uh, there's a lot more pettiness and spitefulness in Earn. But let's check back in with Lisa, who is meeting with the publicist. Uh, I believe his name was Gordon. Lo and behold, a character that I have been shouting in the sky that we get back. And I think this season final season we're gonna get a lot of callbacks to the previous seasons a character like this one and the one and only tracy who the waves where are the waves man the man has lost his waves ladies and gentlemen but he works as i quote say he works for gordon right as we see gordon wants to set up lisa with a artist to draw out on her uh, publishing and he's like man you might be the next uh you know this might be the next harry potter you might be on your way you know go and get your hair done look good i got you set up for this whole showtime thing before we get there lisa is meeting with her i think she said it was her best friend and i don't know was that supposed to be kendrick lamar that was at the bar anyway it looks like kendrick lamar i don't think it is but anyway her best friend's like you know lisa times are rough. I can't give you money this this uh, this time of the month was kind of alludes to that her career as a writer hasn't really worked out and she's been kind of coming down at hard times financially. So we get all that set up there, which we finally transition it into story time. As Lisa with a new hairdo, like I said, she might have her racist, deep rooted discrimination ways, but she takes in the culture from that music she was listening to earlier for, for looking at and eyeing at that black dude who she seemed to have an eye for to even the little curls and the hair again she's up she's absorbing the culture but she has her prejudice ways right which is a, obviously a deep more deeper rooted conversation into how people want to accept they cherry pick some things from culture but they're ultimately deep rooted into again racist ways bigoted ways and things of that nature but we learn that this is the same person that ran into earn and once i started to put the pieces together when she was talking about the service dog and she worked at the airport as soon as she said she worked at the airport i'm like oh yep that's the same girl and i'm like something's going on here as we see her transitioning into reading this book the kids are making fun of her talking about farts and all that everyone's ultimately leaving wrap it up she's running out of the library and lo and behold we, this is a rap party and as Darius says, this is the extreme pettiness or this is terrorism or it could be both as Earn says, as we ultimately find out as Earn meets with Gordon, we see Tracy, he's paying them, the, uh, the librarians like, you know, thank you for the support in the theater alluding to everything was set up from the very beginning, from the email to the publicist, to those kids, everyone was put on by Earn because he ultimately wanted to get payback, living in pettiness, living in spitefulness. He got his payback, man. That is a, I listen, I have my moments, as I mentioned to you all, where I'd have done things in spite and pettiness, but not to that extreme. Number one, I don't have that type of time nor money if I did have the time, if I did have the money, would I do something that spiteful and that extreme terrorist? As there is, I, I'm. I, listen, I pride myself on being a good person at heart. I don't think I can do. Now, I have one, especially in my day job. But there's been some people that have really. I'm like, man, if I had some type of money, man, nothing like to physically hurt someone, but to like really just put them in a position that they made me feel. But I don't know if I can go that far. Again, let me know. No right or wrong answers. Would you go that far to get spite on someone? Let's just have the conversation. No right or wrong answers. Let me know in the comments. As Tracy's like, man, you, you, I, I told you to watch out for your cousin. And Ern's like, oh, I'm gonna get you next. And they laugh it off. I, I, hey. If we can get back more Tracy, I want Tracy back. Listen, y'all, I'm here for that. But we end with the end credits, and, and we see the whole play out, and that was whole funny to me. But in seriousness, though, as far as what I took away from this particular episode, to me, this is Earn's repressed trauma from his past and him trying to get right the wrongs of privileged white women like Lisa in this episode. And he has, in all seriousness, that situation with school, 
that situation uh, with Princeton really shaped Earn to who he is today to become the manager that he is with Al to do all the things, the working nine, you know, 10, 12, 14 hours going overseas, doing all these moves that we see him makes. It was all driven by the Princeton situation, which all stems back to season one. So that is a huge character moment there and a, a, a long game, right? That, like I said, all the stuff we've seen Earn do since season one is all predicated after the situation with Sasha and white privilege and everything that shook down in Princeton all led to who he is today. So is that a good thing? Is it a bad thing? As he says, damn, maybe I need to go back to therapy. I hope he does. Cause I, again, I thought that their therapist was a really cool character and, and really grounded in reality, but I doubt it. I doubt that you knowing Atlanta, they always want to move forward and they don't really always tie back to previous things, but neither here nor there, whatever. I don't know how long this video is going to end up being when I finally edit it, but if you stuck around to this point in review, thank you so much. I appreciate you all. Again, scene by scene breakdown, recap, spoiler discussion. We're going to be doing this every single Thursday. And if you all want to, I definitely want to because I love talking about the show and hearing personal stories and hearing you all's opinions on things. We did a couple live streams in season three for episodes nine and ten. I want to definitely do that again, but I want to do that on a weekly basis. So let me know in the comments do you guys want to have an Atlanta season four after show? And if the if the answer is yes, thank you. I, I want to as well. But what day should we do it? Should we do it on the Thursday night? Should we do it Friday night? Because if I'm not mistaken, I believe it comes available on Hulu like later Thursday evening or like Friday mornings. Let me know. I, I don't have FX, so I watch it via Hulu and I also have gotten the opportunity to get to screener. So I don't know how the timing works. So Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday mornings, afternoons, because we do our uh, House of Dragon recaps or after shows Sunday evenings. What day and time should we do Atlanta after shows with guests, special guests, with you all joining? Let me know in the comments below. Again, you all are awesome. I am so excited to be back in this world. These first two episodes felt like the old Atlanta. Again, it wasn't as memorable. They didn't have like the most memorable moments as the season three did or even in the previous two seasons before that, but I still enjoy it. I have accidentally seen <laughs> episode three, which if you saw my spoiler free review, I actually, the, some for some reason, it kind of messed up. I was watching episode two, but it was actually episode three. So I've seen episode three, and you can watch my spoiler-free review to get like a preview of what to expect there. But we'll be back talking and diving deeper into episode three. But again, I thank you all for the support. If you're still here, thumbs up, share, comment, subscribe to the channel. Thank you for the support. Again, shout out to the Instant AM, our sponsor of this video. Hit the button right here. Come and join the community. Check out my other Atlanta reviews. Check out my most recent review, and we'll catch you all on the next one.